All right. Hey, everyone. Hope your weekend was a good one, and welcome back to today's Lunch at the Market. We'll give you five bonus points if you can tell us what we did this morning. That's right. If you answered we sold put spreads on Apple and Deckers, then you would be correct, and you get the five bonus points. Uh, this morning on the open, we got some inefficient prices out of both Apple, Apple and Deckers. Uh, Deckers was kind of ugly. It was down several dollars on the open. Um, it looked pretty bad, so we sold the 70-65 foot spreads on Apple. Um, we sold the 315-310 foot spreads. Both of those expire in February. And now that we're into, well, tomorrow we'll be into February, we've only got three weeks left. It's about 15 trading days until options expiration, which means the calendar starts to really get on the side of the option seller and not the option buyer, especially when it comes to out-of-the-money options. Both of those are up uh, this morning, so if you're really fast, and you did those moves, you can obviously take them off now for a gain. If not, if you're like us, then you'll stick around until options expiration, and we'll see how it goes. Okay. Cree. Uh, Cree, it's pretty much time to move on with life. We're rolling any Cree option spreads that we have that were short with 55 strikes as the short side. Um, there's just really no movement in the stock right now, and there's really no catalyst other than people coming in and buying something that got whacked. Uh, but other than that, it's probably going to be a show me quarter, which means that we'll see pretty much nothing out of the stock until next earnings report, which is obviously going to be three months away. So um, when it comes to uh, players like Deckers and Cree, high-flying hot money stocks, when we, leap, when we see big institutions leap, like we did this morning in Deckers, the volume that we saw in Deckers today hasn't been as big uh, this morning since January the 20th was the last time we saw volume as big as we did this morning in Deckers. So, you know, big flushes like Deckers and Cree, there, uh, really two things happen. One, uh, your best shot to sell spreads is on those big events, right? You get a big uh, flush down in the stock, the stock trades significantly down, and then you can get further out of the money and sell those put spreads. So that's the first good thing that happens when you see something like this morning in Deckers. The second thing is, when a big institution or several big institutions leave, it creates a natural buyer for the stock. Um, take, for instance, Adobe, right? Two times in the last 12 months, Adobe has absolutely gotten crushed and then traded back up and then got crushed again and then traded back up again. Every time it happened, it was an opportunity to either A, buy the stock, or B, sell put spreads down there, and then simply wait for the calendar to do its work. So on those big, high-flying, hot money names. When you see a big institution leave, that day is usually a good opportunity to sell spreads, especially because you're really selling volatility at that point. As long as you're far enough out of the money, when volatility recedes, by that alone, your option spreads are going to be worth less and less, and you should take in your profit. And then second, it's usually a good opportunity to get long. Um, take a look at F5, right after reported, lost almost $40 a share. Now the stock went from sub 105 to it's trading right around 110 now. If for nothing else, you got $5 of appreciation. And then, you know, we're looking for further upside back somewhere close to, if not a 50% retracement of the previous size. So see the stock back up around 120, I guess, is our Fibonacci level that we're looking for. Uh, another uh, Equinix, if you go back and look, I think it's EQIX. If you go back and look at the chart there, there was a massive, disgusting flush. And then the stock just systematically traded back up over the next several months. So uh, Adobe's chart, ADBE, is the same way. So go back, look at some of these examples, and you'll see those two things that we're looking at. One, we want to see the exit of a big institution, because then that means that there's a natural buyer back out there. And what's happening is big institutions are being switched out for much smaller investors who are really content to hold the stock for a much longer period of time than some of these hot money hedge funds. So uh, when the story reasserts itself, meaning we found out that the cloud really isn't broken or that LED light bulbs really are on track to significantly take market share from incandescent light bulbs, which are going to be pretty much um, replaced completely by 2014 in the United States and in many other countries have already been, um, right, the replacements already happened. You're, you're going to get competition between compact fluorescents and LED bulbs because they'll be the only two kinds of bulbs you can buy. Okay? So when the story reasserts itself, and the company begins to beat expectations again quarter over quarter, then you're going to see those uh, big institutional buyers look to come back into the stock. At that point, 
either the small buyer is already up and can exit their position profitably and let the institutions make the hard money, uh, or you're going to see it right significantly bid up because everybody realizes that the story is still intact even though the one quarter was bad. So that's why we like those big giant drops and that's what we look for. Uh, we are convinced that Apple, uh, any time you see panic selling an Apple, you know, $4, $5, $6 a share, um, we are extremely comfortable with Apple's valuation. If you get out a calculator and do any kind of reasonable math, for instance, off the top of my head, we're going to say, what's uh, $24 of EPS, right, that's full year earnings per share, times a 17 multiple. That gets the stock to $408 a share. A, that's not a 20 multiple, which reasonably Apple could because of its year over year, both revenue growth and EPS growth. Okay, so we're going to use a 17 multiple, which I think is still cheap. And then $24 of EPS, well, if Apple did north of $6 a share EPS for its first quarter, and you take that out, Apple could earn somewhere between $26 to $28 a share EPS. Um, so, right, doing the conservative math, we're extremely comfortable with the valuation on Apple. So what we do is when we see a flush, you pull up your options chain, and you start at the 300 strike, and you work up until you see what kind of spread you can sell to get a dollar, about a dollar, hopefully more than a dollar, right? On Apple, you know, we're even comfortable going with a $10 widespread uh, rather than a $5 widespread just because the valuation is, it's really appropriate on Apple. Um, the longer Steve Jobs is out, the more, mo more most people will become realistic about whether, uh, about the fact that he's really not coming back, right? We sent out an article on pancreatic cancer and what that means when you have it. The reality is Steve Jobs is not coming back. While he remains CEO, He's most likely getting that right line of succession in order. This is the third medical leave of absence that he's had um, in the last couple of decades. So the reality is that he's not coming back. And we as Apple investors have to be comfortable with somebody else running the company. And I think they have a great bench. So that's what we're looking for. Now, keep that in mind. Uh, when something does happen to Steve Jobs, you're going to see pretty nasty sell-off. So just be prepared for that, right? If you don't like the volatility, buy puts, right? buy them out as long as you need to and just hold the puts and be okay with the possibility of losing the money on that hedge, which is what hedges are for. Um, put on a collar, right? Sell an upside call. Use the proceeds to buy a downside put. There's all kinds of things that you can do. Our strategy, if we see that big flush, we will then go out and sell put spreads, kind of try to recapture some of that. Um, and then, like I said, investors will become more and more comfortable with the bench that Apple has and the stock will trade back up. All right, metals, excluding gold, look much better today. Freeport Mac brand is making its run back up to $110 a share. Again, those 99, 94 put spreads that we've sold on FCX look terrific. Um, and if for some reason the FCX ever breaks 100, we will be aggressive buyers of not only um, calls, but probably long stock at that point. Because again, Freeport Mac brand is another story that if you go and you do the EPS number, you get a, a price that's significantly higher from where it's been trading around at. All right. Hope that helps. Be on the lookout for bargains like Deckers and Apple, especially with the calendar on your side. The best opportunities are the Monday and Tuesday of options expiration. If you get any kind of volatility, you go in there, you're going to sell your spreads. Try to get as far out of the money as you can. Um, if you get really far out of the money, it's okay to take a smaller premium, like a 50 cents or a 75 cents. If it looks like it's one of those, you're just taking money away from somebody because the trade's going to be over in four days. Thanks for tuning in again today. Hope that's helpful. Uh, had a fantastic weekend at the MTA, uh, which is the technical analyst. It was a conference that they had in, in Charlotte uh, at their current quest. Put that on there uh, at Alpha Trends, um, at Afraid, uh, Afraid to Trade was there. It was a fantastic weekend. If you get an opportunity to go to an MTA event, I strongly recommend it regardless of whether you're a fundamental or technical analyst. Thanks for joining us again today. Keep on the lookout for new episodes of America's Favorite Traders. Our first episode will be recorded tomorrow night, and then hopefully we'll get that out you know, to you by the end of the week. But be on the lookout for new episodes of America's Favorite Traders on iTunes and on the website. Thanks for joining us today. We'll see you tomorrow.